Okay, today I'm going to show you how to get started with Robot Legs, which is a um, framework for Flash and Flex, and it works in Flex 3 and Flex 4 and in ActionScript 3. So the first thing you're going to want to do is get the uh, code for Robot Legs, the Swix that you need, and you can do that by going to uh, robotlegs.org, R-O-B-O-T-L-E-G-S.org, and you can download the latest uh, Robot Legs, which is 1.4.0. Um, and then what you're going to want to do is create a new Flex project. Now I'm going to do this in Flex 4.1, and you can do this in whatever you want. I'm going to call this Robot Legs Communicator. And I'm going to click Finish. And it's going to create this uh, blank project with the Spark uh, tag. And what you're going to do is you're going to right-click the Project folder, click Properties, and click Build Path. And you're going to add two Swix. Um, you're going to click Browse. And one of them, one of the Swix, is in the Bin folder. And that's um, once you unzip it. And that's Robot Legs Framework Swick. And click Open, and click OK. And then you're going to add one more Swick, and that is Swift Suspenders. So you're going to go back to the Robot Legs folder and double-click Libs and double-click Swift Suspenders and click OK. And now your screen should look like this. You should have two um, of these Swicks available. And the reason that you need these two Swicks is that Robot Legs depends on Swift Suspenders. And Swift, Swift Suspenders provides the uh, inject uh, tag that Robot Legs depends on. And you're going to see in a minute what that is. Uh, Robot Legs uses something called dependency injection. And you don't have to use uh, MVC. You could use something else. MVC stands for Model View Controller. And it is. Um, a way to organize your code and one of the benefits and you say why would you do this one of the main benefits of this is just that when your project gets really large and uh, your files start to need to depend on each other and things start getting really confusing with MVC you can make fairly large projects I mean I haven't run into any problems with MVC and my projects have gotten extremely large um, and um, there hasn't been any um, problems with uh, what's called tight coupling, which is where uh, you have files that rely on each other so much that they can't do anything else. Um, the great thing about Robot Legs is that these files that I've created, I have ported to other projects without hardly any changes needed. And they don't even need to go to Robot Leg projects, they could go to any sort of projects. Enough about that, though. Let's start creating uh, robot legs. And the way it kind of works is that you're going to um, put together a sort of... Um, it's kind of like connecting the wires. That's what it's like. You're going to create a bunch of stuff, and then you're going to connect the wires. So the first thing we're going to put uh, on is the thing that connects all the wires together, and that's called the context. So I'm going to call this the communicator context. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new package. And this is going to be com.drmonsky. Uh, communicator. And you'll call it whatever project you want. And this is just a simple example. And in that can go everything that we need. Um, in there, we'll put uh, our new uh, communicator context. And that will um, extend the context class in robot legs and you can see that it automatically starts giving you some uh, automatic code generation here but uh, I like to switch this around I don't want the program to automatically start up I like to have it start up on my own so I'm just gonna call super there and then robot legs has a special function that you override called startup and um, this will get called 
um, when the program starts up. And since you're overriding it, but you didn't tell it to automatically start up, you're gonna have to tell it to start up. So you're gonna call super.startup, and that will have the application start up. Now, this doesn't do any good unless you uh, put the context in your main view. And this is where everything um, starts from. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna put the context right here, and you're gonna type communicator context and that's automatically going to put that up here and there's one thing you have to do and you have to tell it where's this view that I'm putting a context on because you could have multiple contest texts and I'm gonna say this because we're gonna have one context and it's going to um, communicate with this main robot legs communicator .mxml. so now that we have the context we can uh, start building our views and our models and controllers. So basically what we're going to build today is uh, a way for three people to communicate with each other. Although it's going to be only in this application. The cool thing is, is that we only have to make uh, one communication um, view and a view is just it's going to be the MXML, it's going to be the components, it's going to be the views the um, the V groups and the V boxes and the text inputs and all the stuff that you see that's a view so uh, let's go ahead and create a view first so we're gonna create a new package for the view and as your programs get more and more complicated you're gonna wanna um, create more um, folders than just one view because you're gonna have uh, the toolbar view and then you're gonna have the uh, main screen view and then you're gonna have the menu view so you know you're gonna wanna organize your folder structure but for a simple project like this we'll just create oh we don't need a class we're gonna create a new mxml uh, component and um, we'll uh, we'll start off with our main communication view communicator view and this view is going to extend the um, spark panel and we can uh, leave the width and the height out and finish it up and now we'll create our communicator and this is just going to be a basic panel that's going to have a text input and for that I'm just going to make a V group uh, and I'm going to do some padding for this thing I'm just going to do padding 20 all around so padding left padding right just so it looks a little bit nice and this is by no means a design standard that I'm creating here or that I'm following left right we need right 20 and then um, just make the height and the width 100% um, or $100 there we go And within that, we're going to create an H group. With 100%. And here we're going to put our text input. And we're going to give that an ID of message TI for text input. And the width of this, we're going to give it 100%. And then we're just going to have that as a self-closing tag. And then we're going to put a button in here that button is going to be of ID go and the label will just make it say okay and then outside of our H group we'll just have a giant text area that all of the messages will appear in and we'll make it editable to false so they can't edit any of these directly they'll just and then we'll call this uh, messages TA for text area. The height will have as 100% and the width will have as 100%. And so that should take care of that stuff. And then we'll just add this view. And what we can do because this is robot legs and you're going to see how this is all wired up, we can actually create this view as many times as we want and all of those views will get that communication. And there will be no confusion. 
So already one major plus. So we're going to create a V group and so we can put all of our views here. We're going to make a width of 100% and a height of 100%. And, um, and right here we're going to just put uh, another H group because we're going to actually put some other stuff here. But for right now, I'm just going to put this H group here. So it might look a little silly for a second or unnecessary. And so we got our H group there. And now we're just going to put three communicator views here. And, um, and we can give them each a title. This is going to be Harry. And we'll make the width 100%, height 100%. And three communicator views, Harry, how about John and Sam? Okay, so we have three communicator views and we can actually run this right now and we can see what this looks like. So we put our three communicator views up, but we have an error. What is the error? Um, let's see what it says. Oh, I, I put padding right twice. Oh, bottom, left, right, oh, top. Okay, now we can run this and see what it looks like. So already we have our three communicators and now we're just gonna have to wire this up. Um, one other thing I wanna make while we're doing views is I wanna make a message counter. So let's make a message counter and we'll create a new component for this and we'll just call it message counter and for this message counter it will um, let's make it a off of a V group and the width and the height we can just leave blank and for this message counter we'll just create an H group this is just going to be basically um, two labels and a button. We'll create an H group and we'll make it width 100%, height 100%, and we'll make two labels. One label will say the, um, we're gonna, this is gonna be the number of messages. We can just say message count, how about that? And then we can close that tag then we'll make a label. And this label will um, contain the messages. We'll just do msg count. And then we'll create a button uh, so that they can clear the messages. Label clear messages. And ID clear all. Okay, so now we can place this uh, message counter into our main uh, view here and let's put that above the H group so it sits perfectly right there we'll just do message counter and we'll just give it a width of 100% and a height of 100% and then we'll also just do padding top and padding right so you can actually see the and we'll just do 10 again not great design but it will do for now so if we run this we can see when we have our message count up here ah we have a problem it's, it's too big so it's not a height of a hundred um a hundred percent let's do a height of five percent let's try that out and we'll run it and that looks much better okay so we have our message count and we're going to want that to say zero to start off with but um we'll do that next 